You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's in this this enough so you can know what's up in the hood. Art has always been a way for people to express themselves. Art's education has always been deemed as important, but it's always been treated as otherwise. Rahm Emanuel and other CPS officials promised that all students across the city would receive an education in the arts. In 2014, Raise Your Hand Illinois conducted a survey and collected data from about 170 Chicago public elementary schools. They discovered that 65% of those schools don't offer the minimum two hours of arts education per week. My name is Gregory Buckner. I'm 17. I go to Shy Arts. Um, my name is Zion, and I am an, a dance major. Tyler Jackson. I'm 17 years old. I go to the, the Chicago High School of the Arts. My name is Armani Howard. I am 22 years old. Um, I am a working artist. With dance, um, there are different types. So each type, I dance in contemporary, modern, jazz, and lyrical. And in those dances, my emotions, they influence my moves. So that's how I express myself. I feel like throughout any like style I use, like painting, drawing, illustrating, or anything graphic, uh, color is usually something that's very uh, consistent. I usually consistently use the same uh, color palette to enforce like my ideas. Get in like the idea of like what my style is one, but then also just experimenting with it and experimenting with like the influence of other styles, experimenting with like just like all the different types of art that's out there because like within it, it goes back into like your own work. So if you go out into the world and you experience new things and I kind of use that loosely. It doesn't actually have to be just like painting. It could be like food, it could be music, it could be someone's culture, like that's all art. So if you go out and you experience as many of those different things as you can, then that's gonna eventually influence your art because you're now taking in so much new stuff that you can take inspiration from. You're taking so many new factors of the world that you're living in to like experience the work itself and it's and just art. If that was a mindset we had for everything, the things around us we wouldn't have. We wouldn't have cameras, we wouldn't have planes, we wouldn't have any of that stuff. I get a little bit upset because with art, you're supposed to express yourself. Like, what am I supposed to be doing then? Like, if I'm not doing this, is there like something I should be doing? I, believe, I really don't care what anybody else say because like, if you want to do it, you should do it because it's your life, it's all about you. It's not no, about what anybody else thinks about you. That's also why I chose dancing, because with dance, there are no limitations, and I can express my way, myself, in any other way. Like, I'm not gonna, like, conform to, like, what I'm supposed to be doing, because that's, like, an idea that doesn't really exist. So, like, it's, it's, it kind of goes into, like, a whole nother story of things, but, like, it's just that person's personal fear. And like, they don't do that in their own life. So yes, because you are both in the same world of things. Like, if you wanna try something that you think that yes, it may be a lot of work, just do it. Just try it, like, that's, I don't know, that's just like, to me, that's just like the most demeaning thing you could do to someone. If someone's trying to do something that just because it's not the conventional way, like yes, it's not science. Like, you can blow something up if you don't chemically do it right. But like, besides that, you should be able to try anything. Like. Just because you're at a certain level doesn't mean that you can't like just keep shooting for something bigger because then it's like what are you going to do at that point? What inspired me to dance was when I was five years old and I was in my first recital. I guess after that I always wanted to be a dancer and since I was told I couldn't say certain things growing up and I couldn't do certain things growing up, 
I chose dance because with dance, I can do whatever I want and no one can tell me what I can and can't do. Um, like, just looking at different stuff on the media, like, if I really like to see what they're doing and I really want to go for it, it like inspires me to actually like push myself to do it because I just feel like we can do anything that we put our mind to. So, and what really inspires me is myself, to be honest, because I believe I can do whatever I want. So, yeah. At first, it was just like the possibility of like what I can do. Um, seeing like a painting for the first time, seeing like artwork for the first time, and just like realizing that like a human did that. And I don't, I don't know, I just don't want to make this seem like it's very cheesy, but like at this point now, it's like completely different. I want to like see how many people I can like positively influence in the world. When I was younger, uh, my elementary school didn't have art class for at least five years. So, and I really didn't have like, like a lot of people in my school didn't have like, a lot of experience with art and art can portray your feelings in so many different ways. It was kind of cheesy though. It was like, a, like you use Crayola and like, and like that even now I've gotten older and I've been able to appreciate those like, like those materials. Cause like, yeah, it's like, it's color principles. It's still something you can create artwork with, but like we also had art teachers that weren't very like, thought inducing like they weren't like it was just kind of one of those things where it's like here's some construction paper here's some crazy scissors some glue and colored pencils have fun and like yeah it almost becomes like yeah like it almost just becomes like a joke like the way school approaches art it almost it's like a joke the way they treat it so we did but I wouldn't now that I know what art is I wouldn't consider it an art class when I was in elementary school, I had an art class pretty much from when I started until I was in about the seventh grade when I guess like CPS, like budget got cut or whatever. So like, I've had an art class for a majority of my life. There were like maybe two or three years where I didn't because you know, since I go to art school, I kind of have that extra education. But outside of that, no, not really. Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like school should um, provide an arts education, like even not just in art, but like like bring back art classes and like dance classes, like music classes, just because I feel like I feel like if kids who like there are a lot of kids who aren't exposed to like those type of things, and if they had that exposure, then they would feel you know more open to express themselves, and they would be less into like social media and like stuff that kind of distracts you from the world outside. Like, I feel like art classes would just help you gain an appreciation for, um, for kind of like the world around you. At least like get the idea of like what you can do with art and like what's the possibilities of it. Um, there should be more of like a, like a realistic focus of it. The only thing is, is that a lot of people, like a lot of teachers and instructors, like it's kind of sad because like art is a very like, it should be a very unbiased and open thing, but a lot of like art teachers can tend to be very limiting. Like once like a, like a younger artist or just anyone who's younger, they just think that it's like, you can only do so much at that point in time. And like, yes, that's true. Your art gets refined over time. You become more experienced and become better the older you get. But it's just limiting if like you're shooting for this artist at a very young age to like, mold that so that way when you do get older you're even better than what you were when you were younger like i it should be it should be like a it should be mandatory almost like as much as we have like gym and like math and all those things it should definitely be mandatory but it should be refined and like i don't know they should just go back to the drawing board with it and just like treat it as if it was one of those other classes people have always had different ways of expressing themselves and within those communities boundaries have been set thus holding them back and telling them that they can't work outside of their chosen medium. The people shown here are not bothered by what people say and do it anyways because it's what they love to do. Hopefully, city officials will one day recognize how, many, how much of an impact art can have on a student. Art is like, it's kind of like, 
at this point in time where it's like undermined and like how powerful it is, but you can like change someone's life with art. Someone can look at something and can be from a certain area and like just because they looked at something that they didn't understand and it touched them, they're now influenced to like want to go do something. I've always known I was different. I've never exactly fit in. Is it the clothes I wear? Been this way all my life. If I were to compare myself to something, it would be art. Weird and different like me. Art is not just pen and pencil, mindless lines and strokes. Art is an expression, feeling and emotion. The Cloud Gate downtown was a British sculpture and Yusuke Kapoor's first outdoor piece. It was meant to mirror the Chicago skylines and was shockingly inspired by liquid mercury. I was looking at the cloud gate one day, like I do every Tuesday, and I met someone. I don't know, but I call him Bark. After that, we kind of started touring the city together. Just a couple of steps away was Crown Fountain, so we decided to go. Crown Fountain is a great example of interactive art and fits into an uncommon category of video sculpture. Jaume Plenza has promoted interactions between people and water, distinguishing Crown Fountain from Chicago's and many other fountains. Plenza had been working with dualism for a long time, but he had also wanted to introduce the use of video technology, seen in some of his previous pieces. With doing so, he had hoped to overcome the obstacles of creating an interactive relationship between the viewers and the art and was amazed to discover he had achieved that when it became a public water park for children within the hours of opening. Our last destination was a sculpture on the Bloomingdale Trail called Brick House. It was completely made out of recycled rubber tires and stainless steel. Its creator, Chikaya Booker, meant to combine ecological concerns with racial and economic differences, globalization, and gender. While we were at Brick House, Bark noticed something sticking out from within a spiral. It was a person. It also shared the same passion Bark and I have for art, so it joined us. Now that I think about it, I may not be as alone as I thought I was. I mean, even the creators of the public art piece I mentioned earlier experience a lot of judgment concerning their work, so maybe I'm simply looking at the downside of things. After going to several public exhibits, I've met people who like me for me. I guess we're all a little different. There are a lot of people around the city who hope to share their aspirations who are not known to many and despite that, they still aim to create their art. Uh, my dad was really talented. Um, he used to paint motorcycles and he kind of like instilled this whole like, uh, like be a good draftsman, good work, like things need to make sense. Like, um, and that kind of just like radiated and I kind of pursued it from there and kept drawing and kept working, went to school. And then from there, uh, I actually started working at ASM as an intern and then my career kind of just went from there. Uh, I guess uh, I got involved in art uh, early on uh, being uh, poor as hell in the hood uh, with nothing and you had to like just you know crayons and paint and markers and and you just express yourself on the street and uh, um, that's how I, it wasn't art it was just expression you know I didn't know it was art until someone told me it was art. Man. <laughs> um. I, you know, it breaks down to like designers, they design buildings, there's murals, there's color, there's like all these things that maybe you don't think about every day, but all these things are thought out and they're usually behind it is a creative person. And it's just me as a creative person, I would want to see more of that and more and like more people to be excited about it or like community projects or things that just sort of bring people together. And then you're looking like, wow, that's nice. It's, uh, it's great to see something that kind of 
inspires people to be like, man, I could probably do something like that. I think Chicago is my most influence. This is the city where I live. This is the city where I play. This is the city where uh, I laugh and cry. Um, um, it, it, a lot of my artwork is a representation, is a uh, expression of, of how I live in the city. So I think the city is a big part of, of, of my art. It's, it's a way to give back to it, and it's a way to, um, uh, to describe to other people how I see my city, a combination between my brain and my heart. It's about the passion that I'm uh, a part of, and it's about the, the, the thought process that got me my passion. It's about melding um, what I think is important to what I feel needs to be said. As important as it is, it seems like it's always an afterthought, but almost everything revolves around the chair I'm sitting in, this building, you know, the colors that they picked on the walls. Like, it's all somebody going like, ooh, this could look nice if we did this. And um, I just wish that more people were into it the way that I feel about it, but it's hard to sort of project that. And when actually making the actual piece of art isn't the hard part. The hard part is getting started, like figuring out the direction, figuring out like, um, the message that you're trying to convey or the vibe, um, those are the, like, that's the most time consuming part. Like actually doing the work or putting the mural up is the easiest part because you're just not even thinking, you're just putting things together. Uh, don't be afraid. I think that's one of the hardest things to uh, overcome and it's, and it's, it's fear of, of success and it's fear of failure and it's a fear of, of belonging and, and all those things are, are ways, are, Art helps you develop those things where you can get comfortable with them. Um, I think young people at the same time have a fearlessness about the city, but they have a fear about the future. Um, and I think art can bridge that. And you just decide like, all right, how can I make this even weirder or more fun and then build off of it? And then other people see it and they're like, okay, like there's a little bit of versatility and personality and things that you can kind of, um, used to add to the whole overall character itself and um, yeah um, basically I took it as one thing at a time and one bridge at a time and just tried to figure out like what can I do next how can I sort of pursue this or how could I help somebody out or I would put myself out there and it was all just um, the people from the city and I couldn't be happier to be here and work with like people who've done art, like Chicago Public Art Group, or like they would show me little things. And I feel like I learned more being in the city around people than I did when I went to school for it. So if anything, that would probably be what sort of had a lasting effect on me. So create your art, whether it's dancing, singing, painting, or sculpting, as long as you're doing what you want to do. I am the best dressed, but I have a relentless drive for progress. So look at me and make progress. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Low key, I'm kind of hungry. But if you look at me, we need unity. This country's falling apart. My name is Sandra Yao, and I am a freelance designer and an artist. Um, My name is Christopher Truehood. was four years long but I did it in three years so I graduated in three years from Columbia College I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Fashion Design let's see how many years of college <laughs> um, Kenny the King I'll say two years my favorite fashion designer will have to be will have to be a local designer she goes by Rocky Love she's like I said a local designer in Chicago and she's up and coming. Her design name is Urban Classics. You don't necessarily know how to draw in order to become a designer. Um, you do need to be able to 
get your idea across to somebody. If you're not making it yourself and somebody else, say, overseas has to make what you are designing or maybe you have a tailor, there's got to be some way for you to communicate exactly what this garment should look like. Uh, for fashion, there are um, forms that we call croquis, and it's a female and a male croquis, and you use these kind of guidelines to draw proportions of the fashion. Isn't Being a good illustrator isn't going to break it for you if you want to be a designer, but communication is going to be key. When I design, uh, we use what is called a form, and that's essentially what a mannequin is, but you know, it's a little bit different. It's um, shoulders are collapsible on that. There's arms that they can attach so that you can make a sleeve and drape on it. Um, you know, um, it can it can raise from the fl from the floor and be higher if you need it to be higher so you can fix a hem. Um, but that's where you start. So you'll make a muslin. You'll either drape on this form or you'll put it on there after you've constructed it. And once it fits on there to your liking, you'll transfer that to a female or a male physical model. I've been a model basically my whole life to, to, to my knowledge. My mom started me off modeling at the age of five. Um, but to, to my knowledge, my grandmother said my whole life. Um, depending on what this garment is, how simple it is, um, how minimal it is or how intricate it is, it can take a couple hours, it can take a couple of months. Um, to do an outfit, um, you know, again, that it just depends on what the outfit is, but. Modeling, it's kind of fun, but at the same time, it's kind of hard. That's why I kind of switched my major over from modeling to photography. Yes, it's more, in my eye, it's more structure. You get to control what you want to do and have your image brought to life more than seeing, being directed and having somebody else direct you. For my college, Kennedy King, they, um, had me in a photography class and took me to another level. So I started loving it and started taking it to a different level. And then I took that and started learning how to work the camera.